Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the Fed Financial Stress Index, and in particular, a very unusual occurrence that we discovered in the data. Uh, the Fed Financial Stress Index measures the level of financial stress in the marketplace. It's comprised of a series of data sets that are maintained by the Federal Reserve. They watch interest rates, yield spreads, many different components of the bond market. Now, a zero level indicates normal market conditions when the numbers above zero, above average levels of stress. If the numbers below zero, below average levels of stress. So we can see here the red line is a Federal Reserve uh, fund rate, federal funds rate. And the blue uh, chart over here is a Fed stress index. Now it saw obviously a big spike up March of 2020 as a result of uh, a great deal of stress in the marketplace around that time. However, Subsequent to that, we saw, as we know, stock markets uh, rose quite a bit. The Fed financial stress index remained below zero, indicating a less than a less than amount of stress in the marketplace. Notice when we started to see spikes up start to emerge. For example, March of 2022, and then we had further occurrences uh, later on May. June of 2022. Now, if you recall from some of our other recordings, June of 2022 was the beginning of the inverted bond market curve. Uh, and we saw also very, very high levels of interest rates, or I should say inflation, which caused high levels of interest rates. But again, the Fed stress index measures yield curves, yield spreads within the bond markets. What we want to talk about is this very unusual spike that all of a sudden occurred around March 21st, 2023, just a couple months ago, out of nowhere, we were at a negative level, and then all of a sudden it popped up to around two and then fell back to the downside. Why did this occur? Well, let's take a look. We're actually going to dive into the data. Again, remember this was around March 20th, 21st, roughly around this area. Now we can see uh, we have the Fed stress index over here. That was a level of negative 0.1 before that 0.48, 0.1. Remember, negative numbers mean lower, below average levels of stress, good for the stock market. All of a sudden for four days, five days from March 17th through March 23rd, we saw a spike up to 151. Why did this occur? Well, the S&P 500 was at 39.60, 39.17. It ended this period of time around 39.49. Stock market really didn't even notice. Uh, the federal funds rate was at 4.75%. Then we had an interest rate hike to 5% around that time. We had the 10-year bond market, which was at a 356, 339, 347, ended at 338. The one-year treasury was at 449, 426 up to 448. But notice the 10-1 spread, which was at a 0 0.93, meaning, and it was negative 0 0.93, which means the one-year treasury, the yield was higher than the 10-year. A negative number on the spread means it's an inverted bond market, where the one year's at a 426, the 10 years at a 339. So you subtract 339 from 426, you get 0 0.87. Well, we had over here an inverted bond market of 0.75, 81, 68, 93. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, to spike up to 109. Now, the the one-year Treasury during this period of time spiked from a 4.26 to a 4.68, where the 10-year 3.39 only to a 3.59. This only went up 20 basis points, where this went up a good uh, 42 basis points. The one-year treasury literally went up double the amount of the amount of yield that the 10-year did in a very short period of time. This is as best as I can surmise, maybe related to the reason why the Fed stress index spiked during that time. Now, this was very temporary, but I think it is worth noting because again, we had not seen levels of a Fed stress index at 151 since we saw these spikes back in April, March of April 2020, this was the highest level for the Fed stress index in three years. Just for five days, most people didn't even notice and then it all, it all went away. 
Now, let's get a little bit of context what's, what this means. Well, we have the yellow line, that's the S&P 500. The blue line is a Fed stress index. Now, obviously, we know what happened in the stock market March of 2020. S&P 500 had a huge dive to the downside, which has a very strong inverse correlation to the Fed stress index. Markets have a very direct connection to this index. When this index goes up, smart markets go down. Now, the stock market just seemed to ignore this, but I think it's important to recognize this for what it is, is that the Fed stress index, whatever parameters it's watching, it's, a, it's actually a very complex calculation, but it reacted to the bond markets. Uh, now, this doesn't mean that the stock market's going to go down tomorrow, but it looks like you know, the Fed stress index, it's starting to maybe alert us to something. Here's the Fed stress index uh, in the S&P 500. This is a little bit more zoomed in, and we can see how dramatic this spike was, uh, March 20, 21st, in that area. Stock market, well, it was down a little bit, but not really to any great extent. Uh, notice also, this is the one-year treasury in red, the 10 years in green, and then that spike in March. Both yields came down quite dramatically, but then remember, when we looked at the data, it was a one-year treasury that, that really had the big spike up and pulled away an extra 20 basis points. The 10-year uh, went up 20. The one-year went up 40. Well, what happened here is a one-year went up more than a 10-year. It recovered. And you can see how this gap really has widened. It was very narrow between the 1 and 10-year, and it has widened. Here is the Fed stress index. Uh, this is versus the spread. This is our spike in uh, 2020, and then this, this is our spike now. Interestingly enough, this spike occurred, and we can see all of a sudden you see how the, the inverted bond market just fell to new lows. Now, what does it mean, the inverted bond market? It means that the short-term treasury is higher than the long-term treasury. It's an unusual occurrence. It doesn't mean that every single inverted bond market leads to a recession, but every significant economic downturn has been preceded with an inverted bond market. Our inverted bond market right now is exceptionally uh, extended, about 150 basis points currently, 130, 150 basis points currently, whereas the inverted bond markets of 2007 and 2000, uh, 2000 and 2007 were only 50 basis points, so it's it's a lot more now. But what it's telling us in terms of the mechanics is that in the short term, the market, the bond market, which is a reflection of our economy, expects higher interest rates. But in the long term, it actually expects much lower interest rates. The long term outlook is much more bleak than the short term expectation. Now, how does a market, the stock market, uh, behave based on the Fed stress index? Well, we can see here the x-axis at the bottom, that's a Fed stress index. Remember, negative numbers are good. That means the market's going up. This shows us the one month past performance of the S&P 500 based on the bracket that we're in in terms of the Fed stress index. Now, for example, if we see a Fed stress index at, well, let's say 0 0.9 to the negative, negative 0.90, it tells us that on average, the stock market, the S&P 500 has returned a level of around 2% over the past month. 2% a month is actually not bad at all. If you extend that out for the year, we're talking about 24% for the year return on investment on the S&P 500. 2% is a good, a good number to look at. That's when we have a Fed stress index at negative 1, negative 0.9. If the Fed stress index is at 0, we can expect that the market on average has returned around a 0% return. Now, uh, we saw a spike up to 150. We don't even you know, really have that kind of data. There isn't a lot of occurrences. But take a look. When the Fed stress index is at a level of 0.6 to the positive, that tells us that the stock market during that period of time has averaged around negative 4% in one month. A 4% drop in one month in the stock market on the, on the average is a pretty big drop off. You know, you take that out to the year. Let's say we're down 4% a month, 12 months in a row. Well, that's a, that's a huge pullback. Uh, so we can certainly see it's important to recognize those in occurrences when the Fed stress index rises above uh, zero. We had just a five-day spike. 
I don't want to extrapolate this out to mean something that it isn't. But I think it's important to note that whatever the Fed stress index watches, it seemed to react to that little jiggling in the bond market. And, you know, we're going to keep a very special eye on this because it looks like this indicator is kind of waking up a little. Now, speaking of bond spreads, uh, let's take a look at the black lines, the black histogram bars. That represents a federal funds rate. We're 2.5%. Now we're up in the, the fives area. Uh, the red line is a one-month T-bill, which we know is very reactionary. Uh, the 10-year bond is in blue. Now, this is very much an inverted bond market. The longer-term maturities, like the 10-year bond, the blue line, we would expect to be higher. It's longer maturity, should be higher yields. But we have an inverted bond market. Now, the one-month T-bill is really volatile. We had moves up to around the 483 level. That was in March. Uh, then we had a big spike down. That was April 21st. Um, and then we had a huge move up. We are at a 602 on May 29th. It since then has dropped. The other day we talked about a big sell-off on the one-month T-bill. Sell-off, we're talking about the yield. When yields go down, it means prices are going up. When yields on the T-bill go down, it means that traders are flooding the T-bill with money. They're moving their capital out of stocks or out of other maturity bonds looking for safety in the, in the very short-term yields. So now we know that those periods of time in history, like in 07 and 2000, when the one-month T-bill is above and then crosses back below the 10-year bond, that usually is followed by very, very negative stock markets, to say the least. That hasn't occurred yet, but when we see big spikes down on a very strong T-bill, you know, it's important to, to recognize exactly that. This is what 2007 looked like. The T-bills in red, we had the inverted bond market. We had those tops. The yellow is this S&P 500. The blue line's a 10-year. We had the inverted bond market. The red's above the blue. Well, we know what happens next after the end of 2007. This is 2007 through 9. Now the T-bill, the red line was above, spiked down. The S&P 500 was still chugging around 1,500, but very quickly dropped. Uh, and by December of 08, we, uh, we were at levels of 700 on the S&P 500. And notice what happened. What, notice what coincided with the stock market falling? The red line, the T-bill. The T-bill chased the market or the market chased the T-bill, however you want to you know, look at it. But the T-bill going down back below the 10-year, that coincided, that correlated with the stock market drop. Here's 2009, the T-bill's really low. That's what we see with strong stock markets, by the way, a very low one-month T-bill. The 10-year bond usually tracks higher, but then all of a sudden we start to see weakness in the 10-year. That was the first warning sign. Then we start to see the T-bill rise. That was 2016. Well, 2016 led to 2019, 2020. The T-bill spiked higher met up with a 10-year, right around 2.5%. We had a very momentary or very short-term uh, inverted bond market. That's because what happened in 2020, March, it was very, very sudden. Uh, so, you know, it, it, took, it took the market by surprise, to say the least. Stock markets collapsed, and so did the T-bill uh, yields. Now we see 2020 to 2022, Stock markets begin to rise, and again, when we have a strong stock market. By the way, you know, you know, we don't want to be overly negative, and you know, you know, put any kind of bias onto this. But the fact of the matter is, when the stock market is truly strong, and I know it's been strong over the past couple of weeks, when the stock market is truly strong, this is what the bond market is supposed to look like. The ten-year goes up, and the T-bill stays flat at the bottom. The red line's right at the bottom. It looks just like 2009, 2010, 11, 12, right? All the way through 15. Notice the blue line. Okay, the 10-year wasn't so strong. We had, an, we had a lot of quantitative easing, and you know maybe that affected the 10-year the to an extent. But take a look at the one-month T-bill. It was hugging right at the bottom. Well, 2020, same thing. The T-bill's right at the bottom. The warning sign is when we start to spike over here in the T-bill. Fast forward to present case, present uh, time, I should say. Uh, the T-bill has now risen. 
and it hit, has hit that 602 level. It's still above the 10 year, but we know what happens when that T bill eventually crosses below the 10 year. Uh, you know, we don't know that history can be, you know, perfectly any judge, but you know, historically it has not been a good sign. So we're going to keep a special eye on, of course, the stock market and of course the bond market, but also the Fed stress index, which I think maybe a may have given us a little bit of an insight uh, to maybe a little bit of a dynamic in the bond market that maybe most aren't watching. And we're going to keep a special eye on that indicator moving forward. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.